spiritual poverty is your need for God. There are many of you that are poor, poor in life, but so rich, <laughs> you're rich towards God. You, you, you don't, you, you, your lifestyle shows you don't need God. Because what shows you need God is not what you say. It is in the living and the behavior that shows that I'm desperate for God. Even what shows that you're sorrowful for your sin. Not what you say, Lord, forgive me. I am sorry, Lord, I repent. Oh my God, Lord, I'm sorry. That's not, the, that's not what God looks at. God understands your sorriness. Your sorrow for your sin when it sees it. You see, fasting is the humbling of the soul. It is a sign of humility. You humble your soul in pain and mourning and remorse. And in remorse towards feeling sorry for breaking this relationship with God. Or betraying nothing. That sorrow. That sorrow, child of God, is what God is talking about. That sorrow. Genuine sorrow from the spirit. That sorrow is accompanied with behavior. You're fasting. When was the last time you really took your life serious and fasted and prayed for that sin that you say is your, this is my weakness, what you call your weakness. When was the last time you fasted? And you cried out to the Lord and prayed and said, Lord, I am fasting not because I want a breakthrough, a financial breakthrough, not because I want to be married, not because I want this and that. I am fasting because I realize my relationship with you, there's something wrong. Lord, I'm sick and tired of fornicating. I'm sick and tired of lying. I'm sick and tired of gossiping. I'm sick and tired. I can't be, I'm sick and tired of being or being hateful and envious and being, you know, um, you know, malicious and all these kind of things. You say, Lord, that's why I'm crying to you. Lord, renew my, renew my life, renew my spirit, renew in me, create in me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. God, I'm crying to you. Something is not right. Lord, make it right. Help me, Holy Spirit. And you begin to... When was the last time you did that? But always, you have your lists and New Year resolutions. You want God to do. But on those New Year resolutions, actually, you just write a resolution, a piece of paper. Ah, to this year, I want to improve my spiritual life. It's just something you wrote over there. Just like over the years, you've always written a spiritual goal, a financial goal. You know, these are the New Year resolutions. A spiritual goal, a financial goal, and I have these other goals. The greatest goal, number one goal, is to have a stable, intimate, genuine, authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what will take you past time. I say this to say, you don't understand the hopelessness. I pray God will give somebody under this sound of my voice an encounter so you see what I saw. May the Lord give you an encounter with two things. Show you hell, show you heaven. May God give you that encounter. So at least let, let him show you some bit of hell. In uh, see, Give you an encounter to see hell, to see how it looks. You will, it will change your mind. So let him get you out of this body when in and you go over there when you're not ready but you know in in the state you're not ready and let him return you you will take your christianity serious sometimes you may not have the opportunities as some of us have had to see the, to see the things that we have seen to have the encounters we have had that's why we have had those encounters for you and for ourselves to help us and we, God knew we would speak about them to help you. So if you haven't heard it, now you hear it from me. You should be asking yourself, what makes me to look at everything and I despise it? I despise money. I despise fame. I despise things. Because those things mean nothing when you leave this body. This body. The hopelessness. So that's why... Many times when we come, I don't want us to fool ourselves and just be people that are, oh Lord, and we pray things on the surface. There, are, there is a life we have to live. Christianity is lived. 
not spoken. It is lived. We live the Christian life. You live it. You live. You don't. You don't. We live it. We don't speak it. Christianity is not what we speak. Is not songs we sing. Is sing is not sermons. Christianity. Christian life is the person of Christ. Is the life of Christ in a believer. It is eternal life. You live it. A higher life. The God kind of life. Eternal life is the God kind of life. There is a human kind. There is dog kind. There is animal kind. A foul kind. God kind of life is eternal life. The life of God. It has its own principles and standards. We abide by those. Christian life is more than church attendance. It is life. It is Jesus. So you tell the Lord, Father, what sin damaged me, repair me in the name of Jesus. Where I have taken, trampled underfoot the blood of Jesus, Lord, help me. So willful sinning, constant sinning is an insult to the spirit of grace. Now, if you insult the spirit of grace, what grace is going to help you? So this is where most people don't realize because they're not there. They always want to be encouraged. These people are encouraged falsely, giving them false compassion. I tell you the truth, take it as it is. That's the truth of the word of God. So, <laughs> so when you repent, that's when records, as a child of God, repentance causes records to be erased in the realm of the spirit. True repentance, genuine repentance. You confess your sins, you, you repent of it. The record is erased. So Satan can't look for it. Demons can't use it against you. It's only those that are ignorant that Satan will hold in guilt, reminding you of what you did, yet you repented. If you repented, you confess repenting means you turned away from that thing, you acknowledged it before God has seen and turned. When that happens, the blood of Jesus wipes, erases it. So no, now, other people now, they begin to struggle, but the sin was big. The sin is sin is sin before God. There's no big and small sin. Although, each sinner has its own different consequences, but sin is sin. Before God, sin is disobedience. So now, <laughs> now children of God don't understand this. Uh, the implication of their words, they speak lousily, they speak whatever they want, they behave the way they want. <laughs> and uh, please don't mess about with the blood. And I say to the people, you see, demons, it, 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 in the realm of the spirit, the blood of Jesus is the highest ranking weapon. Without the blood, there's no heaven. We couldn't, there's no restoration. Without the blood of Jesus, there wouldn't be no forgiveness. There would be no, we wouldn't even be able to, 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 to have access to the spirit of God. <laughs> ah, mercy. Oh, shadabahante zibradesh. Jenado sepramanta suke yade karado sepramanta. That's when you search your heart.